like what you see here? Then be sure to subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8, a channel devoted to the history of college football. New videos drop twice a week. Click the card in the upper right corner or the link in the description to subscribe now. And now, on with our feature presentation. Usually, when there's a controversy that occurs within the middle of the season, where drama occurs and it's not all happy feelings in the clubhouse, it's got to do something with the game itself. You've got a player feuding with the manager over playing time, a player upset because he's injured and feels that he can come back, but the staff is keeping him out, a player feuding with another player over his lack of effort, a player feuding because the front office made a stupid trade and isn't trying to field a competitive product, a player feuding because the manager changed a policy or lied about something. You get the idea. Whenever there's a controversy that occurs, there is usually a reason rooted within the game itself, or at the very least, preparation for the game and the sport as to why it occurs. And in the rare case where it has nothing to do with baseball, it usually has something to do with someone's personal life, like a teammate having an affair or calling out a player for his beliefs on something. The controversy of today's video? Yeah, it's not any of that. It's about a guy in a dumpling costume. No, I am not making that up. Because the team that you've been watching stink up the joint this whole time is the 2000 Pittsburgh Pirates. And the team was so dysfunctional that in the middle of the season, just as other teams started focusing on their final playoff push, they were focusing on a bunch of pierogies and were furious about the way that they were being presented. They were upset that fans, apparently, cared more about the pierogies than watching their absolutely terrible team play and it left one pirate in particular going on a bizarre rant that, when you break down the logic behind it, still makes no sense whatsoever. Because this is the story behind the bizarre controversy of the 2000 Pittsburgh Pirates. Before we talk about the actual controversy in question, we need some context to understand how the pirates were playing before this all went down, as well as just what the heck pierogies have to do with anything. The year was 2000, and after seven straight seasons with a losing record, some Pirates fans are optimistic that maybe, just maybe, things would turn around in the new year. Heck, they improved from a 69-win team in 1998 to a 78-win team in 1999, so maybe they could keep that going, especially with some off-season moves that look solid on paper, like signing Luis Soho and trading with the Florida Marlins for Bruce Avon. Alas, that did not happen as once again, the Pirates were a complete joke of a baseball team. In their final season at Three Rivers Stadium, they were giving their fans absolutely nothing to cheer about, as at no point during this abysmal season of theirs were they ever above 500. The best they were was a 2-2 two two record after four games, and that was it, as they spent the entire season, minus one day, under 500. When you have such amazing statistics like a pitching staff that walked the second most batters of any team in baseball, a bullpen that had fewer saves than any other bullpen in the league, and a hitting unit that finished below the league average in just about every major stat, often in the bottom third, it's not hard to see why the Pirates were once again an awful team, especially by the point where this controversy takes place, when they were 43-57, and were 14 games under 500 and were models back of the St. Louis Cardinals in the NL Central. So if the team stinks, how do you get fans to come to the games and watch the team play? I mean, there's the appeal of this being the final season at Three Rivers Stadium, but that wouldn't really apply until the final weekend, especially because, let's be honest, no one really liked Three Rivers Stadium, as it was well past time to upgrade to a new venue. As a side note, if you want to learn more about the absolutely bizarre history of Three Rivers Stadium, you can do so by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But to answer that question, you have to get creative with your game presentation. And fortunately, the Pittsburgh Pirates had something modeled after the sausage race in Milwaukee that kept fans entertained in between innings and gave the kids something fun to look forward to. This thing was called the Great Pierogi Race, and it still exists to this day, which is what you're watching right now, since unfortunately, no footage of this exists from back in 2000. It was created by in-game entertainment manager Eric Wolf as a way to improve the in-game entertainment offerings. And like a lot of in-stadium events, it's a ton of fun, even if it is chaotic. 
as Wolf said on the pierogi race, it is the most stress. You've got four people wearing pierogi suits who are running out onto the field live in front of, hopefully, 37,000 people. They're human beings, and we don't have control over them. Back in 2000, how the race worked was like this. Three pierogies raced against each other, either on a video board or in person, with the pierogies being named Potato Pete, Cheese Jester, and the main character in our story, Sauerkraut Saul. The only problem with the race? Saul never won. For whatever reason, Sauerkraut Saul just couldn't cross the finish line first. Sometimes, the other pierogies were just better than him. Other times, when it looked like he was going to get that first win and snap his drought, something happened. Like he got tackled by someone, or he took a detour and got tripped, or he tripped, or something along those lines. Obviously, this was all for show, and was all part of the act to make Saul the lovable loser. However, this promotion worked so well that not only did fans love it, but a lot of kids came out to the games, maybe not solely for the race, but they stayed long enough where they would watch it, and wouldn't leave the game early until the race happened. Much like the sausage race in Milwaukee, even though this was an obvious knockoff on that, this was a hit, with fans, and heck, even players getting invested on the action. As pitcher Scott Sauerbeck said, in the first few weeks of the season, that was my nickname. The sour part fit in. The guys called me Saul. Back then, I wanted him to win. But now, I don't want him to win. Other players felt differently about Saul's losing streak, with shortstop Pat Muir saying, I was thinking about helping Saul. We have to get him off the schneid. Get him a W. Outfielder John Vanderwolf saying on trying to sabotage the race to let Saul win, I'd help. I'm good to go. And with catcher Jason Kendall saying, maybe they should just let sauerkraut Saul win. Maybe that will get us out of our little slump too. This was all good, clean, harmless spawn, where it seemed like everyone was a winner. That was everyone except for Saul. Heck, the Pirates even ran advertisements in local newspapers promoting the pierogi race, so as not to miss whenever Saul finally won his first race and broke his losing streak. In many ways, everything about this was brilliant. So what was the problem? Well, there was one player that was absolutely livid that the Pirates were doing this. And I don't mean in a joking manner where he jokingly said something like, if Saul doesn't win a race soon, I'm gonna request a trade. I mean that he was legitimately upset about the pierogi race and how it was being marketed. To the point where he put the entire team and the entire marketing department on blast. Because this player right here is none other than outfielder Brian Giles. Now, I should note that on a really bad pirate scene, Giles was just about the only bright spot, as he might have been the team's best player. He finished the season leading the team with 35 home runs and 123 RBI, as he was named to the first All-Star game of his career. On top of that, he hit 315, which was second on the team, and he did this in 1999 as well, making him the first player in team history to hit above 300 with 30 home runs and 100 RBI in back-to-back -back seasons. And his 123 RBI was just eight off of the all-time franchise record, set by Paul Wagner all the way back in 1927, which was so long ago that the Los Angeles Dodgers were still known as the Brooklyn Robins. Bottom line, in a sea of terribleness, he was the one redeeming thing. In turn of the century turns, if the Pittsburgh Pirates were the Phantom Menace, Brian Giles is the Padres, an unwatchable mess with that admittedly awesome thing sprinkled in. But even though Giles was great with the Pirates, especially in 2000, this was not his finest moment. Not even close. Because Brian Giles had the genius idea to call out the marketing department for doing their jobs and for marketing, specifically, marketing the pierogi race. As Giles said, and I cannot believe this is real, it bothers me that the club seems more interested in marketing a pierogi race than its players. They buy ads in the newspaper saying, come see Saul win his first race. Why not buy an ad that says, come on out and see Chris Benson stick it up someone's butt? Or come out and see a good, young, scrappy player like Warren Morris? I understand the marketing department is trying to entertain the fans, but they seem to forget we're playing a baseball game too. 
It's like winning baseball games doesn't matter to some people in this organization. He then added, I played in Cleveland, and they have something like 422 straight sellouts. And it's not because everybody comes out to watch a pierogi race. Seriously, Brian Giles, in the middle of the Pirates being terrible, was wondering why the marketing department has decided to pivot away from the on-field product for one, count them, one measly series of ads promoting an on-field promotion. There are many, and I truly mean many problems with Giles' logic and why he created this controversy out of thin air. Number one, you seem to think there's some correlation between marketing a pierogi race and the front office refusing to focus on improving the team when that couldn't be further from the truth. The person who markets the pierogi race and the person who makes trades and manages the roster are two completely different people. You think the marketing department and the front office are the same or even interact regularly with each other? You think a person with a marketing degree making five figures is the same as the person crunching the numbers on your contract extension? Do you have any idea how the business of baseball works? The marketing department's job is to get fans to come to the games. They found that people like the pierogi race and are invested in Saul's story. Therefore, they did the research and realized that they might be better served running a few ads promoting that. There's nothing more to the story. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. Number two, literally every team in baseball does this. Heck, maybe every single team in American professional sports does something like this where they take out ads in newspapers or post ads online to talk about something that has nothing to do with the game itself. This is no different than the New York Yankees having an ad saying come out to Old Timers Day or come out to Yankee Stadium because the first 15,000 people in attendance get a bobblehead or because all the prices on concessions are half off, which with New York prices probably means that a hot dog costs 10 bucks instead of 20 bucks. This is no different than the New York Mets having an ad promoting a fireworks show after the game, or having a post-game concert to stick around for. There is literally nothing about this that is unusual, that every other team isn't doing in some capacity already. So why you're attacking the marketing department for this, I have no clue. But number three, and perhaps the funniest part of them all, what you said is, quite literally, the reason that they're not going that well. You said, why don't they promote Warren Morris? Why doesn't the marketing team tell people to come out and watch Warren Morris play? Well, I'll tell you the answer to that. Who the heck is Warren Morris? The guy who, in the last month before you made this statement, was hitting 175? The guy who, over his last 100 plus at bats spending more than a month, was hitting below the Mendoza line? Why isn't the marketing team putting out ads to get fans to come to the game? so they could watch the great Warren Morris play. They'd be fired if they did that, because that would be the worst advertising campaign of all time. You're complaining about the marketing team not promoting a player that's sitting 175 over the last month when you're 14 games below 500 and are out of it. You realize how ridiculous that sounds when you put it like that, right? And you realize how ridiculous that sounds when prior to one of the games just a few weeks ago, you yourself flat out talked about the pierogi race and said, I think Saul has a chance tonight. We'll see. Like, you've talked about the races before, and now you're upset that the marketing team is doing the same? Do you not see the hypocrisy there? You're complaining about the marketing team doing their jobs and being good at it while you're 14 games under 500. I mean, that's insane. Just truly insane. I mean, it could be worse than that you could hit one of the pierogies with a baseball bat, leading to the police getting involved. So somehow, this isn't even the craziest controversy involving people dressing up as food and racing against each other in Pirates history. But it's number two. And it's number two for a good reason. Because it's always a good sign of a completely functional and healthy organization when you have a player and a marketing department feuding over a pierogi. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8.
To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.